YouTube channel. This is Coffee, Tea, and Art episode number eight. I've been sick. Eight was really hard. <laughs> uh, this is all things creative and caffeinated. This is Chris and I am Tori and we have a lot of different things to share with you. Um, we have brand new tea. We recently went on a little trip so we're going to share some things from that and let's get started. Okay. So the first thing is we have tea today. Our last episode we did a coffee smoothie um, and we ran into this tea at a little local shop downtown here in Indy. It is called Hugo Tea and it is um, a satchel tea and this is true jasmine. It's really good. We just tried it. I think it's sachet. Thank so you. So instead of the little tea bags, it's like a little triangular piece of cloth. Yes. Do you want to hold that? Well, sachet. no, it's just a square piece of cloth. But What's yes. going to be a sachet? Sachet. Sachet. Chante. And yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what that a was. Sachet, I guess, is cloth and a tea bag is papery or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a small thing with tea in it. <laughs> so you don't need a tea ball, basically. Yeah. Um, we're drinking this tea in a fabulous teapot and little teacups. I'm excited to share this. I love to support local Etsy artists. Um, I guess not local. <laughs> Way far away Etsy artists. <laughs> Where did I get this from? Like South Korea. South Korea, yes. So, do you want to hold up the box? This came in these cute little boxes, and she makes these. Um, I think it's Myostery. I'm going to put a link down there. I'll put a link to her Etsy and to her Instagram. But I love she shares progress shots of these little creations. And I got a tea mug too. I'm sure that'll be in a later episode. Um, but this whole little set. Look at these tiny little tea. They have, um, what are these called on there? Uh, succulents. Succulents. They have tiny little succulents on them. It's so cute. Um, and I love drinking tea out of a tiny little cup. Yeah, the uh, Hugo Jasmine tea. It's really good. It's. Uh... That was very slurpy. Well, sorry. Um, it's a combination of green and jasmine. Um, so it's a little bit earthy, a little bit sweet, a little bit floral. Um, I love the floral, the yeah. jasmine. It's good stuff. So did I get to see the teapot? I think so. I held it up, didn't I? There you go. We'll take a close-up of it, too. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, I love handmade items. And especially... Having kind of little precious things to drink tea out of uh, is a lot of fun. It is. So, for the art product in this episode, spoiler alert, go like this. They know it's a spoiler alert. I don't know why that means that. <laughs> but Art Mento Box, uh, I've talked about it in a previous episode. It's the mixed media subscription box that runs quarterly that Chris and I run. Um, this is an art product coming up in the spring box, which ships March 9th, so very soon. Yeah. yeah, there's a few. I think there's like 15 left. So if you're seeing this, you might still have a chance to get one. Um, the product that's coming in this box is, you know, hold that up, mm -hmm. is Mungo. Do you think that's Mungo? Mungo. Oil Mungo. pastel. These are water soluble oil pastels. And I did a little like play card here and kind of they smear, they're really buttery, they smudge together and blend really nicely, just dry. And then being water soluble, they also um, blend really well with water, which the whole Seems idea... crazy. How does oil and water even... I think of colors. oil paint as being permanent. Can you hold that? Careful, they flip out of there. So yeah, 12 colors in this box. Um, in the Art Bento box, I, you will be getting a whole box, a 12 set. So that's pretty awesome. And yeah, really vibrant, really fun, blendy colors. That's very vibrant and pastel-y. Mm -hmm. So what would be the difference between using something like this and pastels? Why would you choose to use these versus like pastels? Well, these are water soluble. So oil oh. pastels, so you're asking oil pastels. Oil pastels would be water resistant. So you could use them in watercolor and they would stand up. Um, to the watercolor or they could be used as a resist technique because the water would obviously roll off the oil. Mm -hmm. These are water soluble so they're mixed um, probably with more pigment and to be kind of blended in a different way. So you could use them in place of watercolor, you could blend them with watercolor, you could use them in mixed media. 
Um, and this is kind of a little mixed media. I have some pencil and some marker and a lot of these water yeah, soluble oil pastels. It's got texture to it and blend and it's cool. So yeah, they say oil pastel, extra soft, water soluble. And there's a lot of water, water soluble kind of mediums on the market. Um, I think these are really nice because they, you get a really good size one and the colors are really intense. Yeah. So I will be doing the drawing later in my Denix sketchbook, um, which is here, my Denix sketchbook, of this fun little teapot with these. So we'll see what we get from that. Mm -hmm. So Chris has a book he's going to share. So the book is up next. This is a portrait compendium by Tashin. I'm sure everybody out there is familiar with the Tashin brand, they do a lot of really incredible art books. Um, this is the Illustration Now Portraits book, and it is nothing <laughs> but portraits from different artists. So um, there's traditional, this has actually got like fabric portraits. Um, you'll recognize probably some of the portraits in here from different artists. Um, just tons and tons of inspiration from you know, the human face. I love all the variation. Yeah. It's awesome. Look, Apparently like there was a bookmark a in there. Bookmark hiding away <laughs> in there. Uh, yeah, like Pablo Lovato. I've seen his work in various magazines, editorials. Um, just lots and lots of cool... Oh, wow, this is really cool, too. That looks like charcoal. Yeah. So, yeah, Tashin Portraits awesome. I did a portrait um, the other day. I'm going out kind of to the local sketch group and I thought it would be fun to share kind of my portrait here. We'll take a close up of it so you can see it. Mm -hmm. But I love books like that just inspire me to explore different mediums and different techniques. And that one's so neat because um, I love the mixed media ones in there like how people kind of put paint and marker and really just do expressive color explosion portraits. This notebook is a um, marker paper notebook. So it's a Copic brand, like long notebook. Nice I paper. think it is, it's really smooth. Mm -hmm. I think it's meant to do um, kind of scenic, like panoramic scenic illustration. Seems but right. I like doing multiple illustrations on one page. This is kind of my just play around sketchbook. Cool. So next up is a couple of things, like all at the same time. So we went to Nashville a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we had Dunn Brothers Coffee there. That was good. Good stuff. Good, good yeah, coffee. If you're in Nashville, Dunn Brothers <laughs> Coffee is the way to go. Yeah, I love when you see a Yelp review or like the stars and then you're like, I don't know, is it only a good review because there's not that many coffee places or is it like really good coffee? And I was excited that it was really good coffee. Yeah, it was. So while we were there, um, we stopped by a Hatch Print Shop. And yes, Chris got a t-shirt. So did I. Mine's somewhere. I thought I'd wear a heart one since it's almost Valentine's Day. Ooh, hint, hint. <laughs> um, we stopped by Hatch Print Shop and Hatch does all letterpress printing. They have been huge. They've been around forever. Their mm -hmm. kind of golden age was the 1920s, but they have massive amounts of letterpress type and letterpresses that they still run today. They print show posters, they print advertising. A lot of agencies use them for like that really authentic letterpress look now, mm -hmm. um, since digital is so big. Right. And their very first customer, who did I say it was? Harriet Beecher Stowe's brother? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which is kind of, yeah, which is kind of an interesting factoid. Um, but Chris picked up a poster there for... Don Henley. This is a... Um... Basically, they, were, they sell their extra stuff. If you go there, they have, inside the Country Music Hall of Fame, they have a little shop um, where you can buy stuff, and they have uh, their print shop next to it. Um, so they sell old concert posters. You can get them for $10, $20. So I found this Don Henley poster. I love the typography and the color and just the uh, dimensionality of it, even though it's flat. It's like... You know, there's mm -hmm. dimension. Yeah, there's overprinting. Um, Hold that up real quick. Oh. So I was reading in their history on their website, which I'll put the link below. 
Um, these images, I wonder if those were carved by one of the Hatch brothers, because one of them was actually a woodworking and a carver, and he would carve the actual illustrations used on some of their posters. You know, like the eagle here. Mm -hmm. Or the cactus. And they do have in their, um, in their shop, and even in their print shop, of course, you can see the wood blocks that they've carved. So Massive amounts of them. It's yeah. amazing. And there's a museum exhibit. I don't know how long it would be there, but they have a... A screen printing museum at the front part of the area we were in that had some really incredible um, screen prints from yeah. I'm assuming done by the hatch folks. Yeah, it's a rotating it's a rotating exhibit so I don't yeah. know what will be there if somebody goes but something will be there mm -hmm. they also have classes and tours it's a pretty amazing place yeah it is it's really cool so as part of that I bought a bunch of extra posters and I made a whole bunch of these are hatch awesome <laughs> hatch print books. So I'm going to be selling these on my Etsy. They're all original hatch posters on the outside of the cover. They come with a little belly band and they are either mixed media paper or kind of a mixed cotton and mixed media paper. So you can check those out. I did full size and half size and they actually fit um, in the traveler's notebook size. So the half size does too. Hold that up there. I feel like I'm covering your face. Why would you put half of a notebook inside of a traveler's notebook? Well, the cool thing about travelers is because you kind of pack it full of a bunch of different notebooks, mm -hmm. and you can put pretty much any size you want inside the rubber band. And some people put in kind of half sizes. So, like if this was in here, mm -hmm. you could put it in the middle of your rubber band and have like a mini notebook. Hmm. So, I like the traveler's notebook because you can kind of customize it the way you want. Right. I like to have some yeah. variation pockets and paper and mm -hmm. stickers and stencils. So these are all um, limited edition because I made them with real hatch posters and the f this is my first set of 10 I made and you also get a postcard to go with them. This is a postcard from Hatch. Mm -hmm. It's an ampersand. I think that's one of their original typefaces that mm -hmm. they made. Yep. So lots of fun. Um, definitely check out their website. They have the whole history on it and uh, they also sell some of their posters online, so yeah. you can grab one. It does have a book on a couple books on screen printing that has like all their historical stuff, uh, carnival posters, political posters, movie posters. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really like authentic printmaking. Um, I feel like it's here to stay. It's just beautiful. Yeah, it's a craft. So thanks so much for watching episode number eight. Uh, subscribe. Check all the links below. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, oh, in case you have any questions for us or have ideas for shows uh, or want us to review something, we'd love to hear. So leave those in the comments below too. Okay, now we can say bye. 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 Again. bye.